Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today as always by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we are going to continue our special series to celebrate Pride Month here on Attacking Third. And we've got not one, but two special guests today. Before we get into everything, a quick reminder to hit subscribe on YouTube for uh, all interviews. And whenever we go live, hit youtube.com slash attacking third. That helps us out so, so much. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at attacking third. We're joined today by San Diego Wave FC midfielder, Kristen Westfall and Portland Thorns defender, Maddie Pogarch. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're so excited to have the two of you on attacking third. It's, uh, it's the first time for the two of you joining us uh, on the show. So we're going to start off maybe with some NWSL chatter to begin the episode. So for, for Christian, I'm going to go with you first. Uh, San Diego, the wave uh, hovering around the top of the standings right now. How, uh, how has the season been for you and then uh, San Diego? Yeah, I bet it's probably pretty unexpected for a lot of people to see us up there, but we've been cruising. Um, but it's just been super fun to be part of a new team. Um, I've never been part of like a startup team. So that was a a brand new space for me, but, um, it's honestly been so enjoyable, um, with the girls, the staff, I mean, living in San Diego, I can't complain at all. So, um, yeah, it's just been great. I don't really have any complaints. So Kristen, you're, you're with a startup, as you mentioned, an expansion side, but Maddie, for you, I'm going to call you Poe. I love that. Uh, (laughs) Poe for you, you're with the Portland Thorns, a very well-established team in the NWSL, uh, riding throughout the challenge cup now into this regular season on the pitch how are things for Portland going what's what's kind of the vibe of the team right now at in these early weeks of the regular season yeah sure um I mean we are an established club I think uh when you look a little bit closer we have new coaching staff we have some new faces in and so there is a level of um some kind of startup going on and so I think in the beginning of the season challenge cup we were trying to like figure that out and trying to feel out some of the new situations some of the new things and so um as we kind of like go through the season and I think we're starting to become more comfortable with each other and the new systems and um the new staff and so it's been kind of cool to have something new but also something very similar um it's kind of the same <laughs> but um yeah I think challenge cup was was a uh, very much like us trying to figure it out and trying to get um, get on the same page. And then now I'm kind of excited because I think we're really starting to get into our groove and we got two big games coming up, top of the table. Houston is um, in second. And so this could be a big week for us. So I think we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, I feel like the month of June is already getting off to a way different start than the month of May did for the regular season. Um, but we got to talk about, we chat a little bit about the wave, a little bit about Portland now. Now we got to talk about how the two teams are going to be playing each other and you're both doing this interview together. Let's start with the actual game. Uh, Paul, for you, how, how's it going to be playing up against San Diego with Portland? It's a little bit of familiarity. You know, uh, there, there was the group stage matches with Challenge Cup. Does that sort of uh, hinder preparations or does it that sort of like that kind of familiarity help with preparations against going up against the uh, San Diego? Um, yeah, it does. I mean, it, it helps. And there's, there's always something new. I think with this league, it's really cool. One game, like you said, can like three points can take you from eighth to third, like it, it's kind of a crazy league. And so I think that's, what's really cool about it is every game is competitive. Um, and no matter how many times that we played the wave and played the rain, it's every single game is a new competition and we don't know, you know, who's going to be having a great day or not good day. And so you can prepare as much as possible, but um, it really comes down to like, who's putting it out there on the field that day. Um, it's really exciting for me. I, I always tell her, I'm like, I hope you have your best game, but I hope your team loses. <laughs> um, and so it's like interesting balance, but I mean, we end up actually playing directly against each other. Cause I play on the left and she plays on the right. And so that's, um, I mean, we used to do it in training all the time last year, but it, there's like a different level of it now. Like, a game on the line. And, um, I think I know what you're going to do, but I think you know what I'm going to do. And so there's like the mental aspect of, do I reverse psychology or reverse reverse psychology and hit her with what I know? I'm So it's, it's actually, it's, it's fun. Um, it adds like a new fun element to the game, but um, it is interesting because you're also rooting for your opponent to do well, but at the same time, I, I got, I got to ask, cause is there, is there a similar process that you go through knowing you're going to go up against the uh, Portland? Yeah, I mean, 
I think it's a little different because Portland is like my old team. So it's not just like, I guess our personal relationship yeah. that is in her mind. So it is, it is weird. I think it, it's just, it is still weird for me. I just think I was there for two years. So I like absolutely enjoyed my time in Portland. And so it's like weird to miss something while being really happy in a new place. So um, it is a bit of an emotional journey for me, but I just always see it as like such a challenge and like so fun. I'm like, I get to play against so many friends and like, there's so many friends on the field right now. So I just see it in a positive light. And when I do watch <laughs> their games, I am always rooting for Pope, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want you guys to do too well, but like go my friends. So it, it is weird, but at the end of the day, it's just fun and competitive. So it's a good time. I I love that. So you're watching her, you're rooting for her, but you're also kind of rooting against the team because San Diego's <laughs> got to stay in the top of the stand. Right. I'm like, I got a priorities here, but I'm like, they're all my friends. So it's the priorities, fun. personal conflict. I totally get it. Yeah, here, lot. here at Attacking Third, we're celebrating Pop Pride Month this month um, with a, a lot of great conversations. And with you two, um, you are dating in the league, but Kristen, um, you were in Portland and now you're in San Diego and Poe is still with the thorns. How, how does that work? I mean, how did you guys start dating? Um, now that you're playing against each other, is there a lot of smack talk? How did this develop for you two? Um, I mean, we honestly just became really great friends, um, which has been super refreshing. I, yeah. To like build on that foundation, I think was great. So yeah, we started off as like really good friends and then just kind of went from there. Um, so moving to San Diego was hard because I met Poe in Portland. So we had never really gone like five days without seeing each other. So then going from like a short amount of time to months was definitely something that was new territory. Um, so it's been a challenge, but it's also been really fun because it's a new element to our relationship. So um, it's definitely been really hard, but we've, I think, made it work pretty yeah. well, but um, still here. <laughs> yeah, we're still surviving. So I think that says a lot. But um, yeah, I mean, it definitely was something that I didn't want to do, but um, it was necessary, I think, just for both of our careers, which we prioritize. But um, yeah, we've just done our best to make it work. Obviously, we yeah, met go. COVID, so um, yeah. that was like, you know, locked down um, her and her roommate were new to the team, and I was like, I couldn't imagine coming to a new team, not knowing anyone, and now you can't do anything, um, and so I kind of just tried to get to know, like, a lot of the team, and yeah, we can, I think, became really good friends, um, really good friends like Morgan Weaver, and it just kind of went on from there, which is really cool, but yeah, we literally went from every day we spend together to now we're not going to see each other for two months and because she's from Ohio and from Michigan so even when we're in off season we yeah we are able see to other. see each other um so yeah there's like that dynamic of the relationship but I think when it came to her going on to San Diego we were like yeah it's just going to be hard for us it's definitely going to be a new challenge um but at a, at a place where we're trying to put you know we only have this window to achieve all we want to do in soccer and we have possibly the rest of our lives to to um to do the relationship stuff um I was like we'll, we'll make it work and whatever's best for you whatever's best for me um and then we can come back together whenever that time comes but I think it's it's been hard but it's also been very rewarding um to see her do well and it's, it's kind of fun to be more of a fan of hers <laughs> instead of um have that teammate yeah. a dynamic to it as well so it's it's added an interesting element to our relationship which I think it's been pretty well yeah I love that. I love, I love a good love story. I love a good love story just rooted in a friendship. Like I'm here for that. That's what we're like, just sort of doing here at Attacking Third. Just, we're just chatting. We're just having conversations. I, I, and because it is Pride Month, I, I think maybe it's a good time to maybe segue into this and I'll ask you both respectively. Chris and I'll, I'll ask you first. Um, when you think of something like Pride Month, when you think of something like the concept of pride, um, what does that mean to you? Or what do you define Pride or Pride Month as? Yeah, I mean, I feel like with my own personal journey and then just the community as a whole, I feel like it encompasses so much. Um, I think on a positive note, I'm like, you get to be your whole self and it's celebrated, it's accepted, it's loved, and you're part of a community. And it's just 
a really cool thing to be able to be your whole self and be seen and be heard. And that is accepted. Like, I just think that's so necessary and that means so much to me. Um, but I also think it's very important and very necessary for like younger generations to see people and have visible examples of queer families, trans people, non-binary, all that the community encompasses. So I just think it's really positive and needs to be celebrated, but I think it still is very necessary for um, younger generations and the youth to see um, examples of like, I guess like a mirror image to them, like that, that they can relate to and be like, okay, I, I can feel more comfortable being myself because that person is, is out and is comfortable and is received well. So I just think it's, it's a celebration, but I also still think it's very necessary. Um, 100%. I totally agree with you. For, for you, Maddie, does, does something like Pride Month kind of resonate for you in, in a certain or similar way? Um, yeah, for sure. I think there are a lot of years where I, uh, basically didn't consider myself I think part of the part of the community and I was like that's awesome pride month's cool happy for them I um but now I think to have my own personal attachment it does feel more encompassing the fact that like this is a community that is like celebrated and now to be in it and see um allies and outsiders be supportive of that has been really cool and I think like to Kristen's point like the visibility and being able to see someone who you connect with and resonate with and have them be celebrated and have it like be accepted and be okay I think is massive for um just mental health and stuff because I grew up in a pretty small town um and didn't really have that kind of visibility I mean there's maybe um a couple of queer kids in my school and it wasn't like highly accepted and so it wasn't really till actually I moved out to Portland that I started to realize that I was like this is not as strange as everyone or as I would, had felt it was kind of growing up and so there was like that element of it becoming accepted and I was like well I can actually in turn start to accept myself and start to like not try and be who I'm not um and so I think that's been really cool and we have a lot of um LGBTQ people on the thorns and I think we like have a pretty um, good ratio in terms of like other clubs and so it is nice to have teammates and who can relate to because I have like direct people who I can talk to about it and it's kind of like an abundant thing um, on our roster and so yeah I don't really feel so much like um, the odd one out um, anymore and I think Pride Month is like big for that because it really helps people realize you're really not the only one um, when it can yeah. sometimes feel like that. I love that that you're not alone essentially um, and we were really excited to to chat with the two of you for for our pride month segment here because um as two players being an nwsl for for you kristen specifically just sort of someone who's been around since 2016 there is the concept of, of pride month within the league has sort of been kind of a, a regular theme more or less uh, maybe more celebrated in certain markets and than others um for for you is how has celebrating pride within the league kind of maybe evolved in, in your opinion up, up until this point um yeah, like you said, it has been a regular theme. I mean, I think it started with, you know, pride shirts and like, and it evolved into, I feel like it being more of a full on celebration. And like, we have rainbow letters and we have like, and I just like, have seen, I think through my own evolution of like being comfortable with myself and being able to relate to the pride nights even more they feel extremely more special because it feels um, more so, like deeply supported from the whole league. And like, like you were saying, the markets, I feel like are more evened out in the sense of what they're doing for Pride Night, how they're promoting it, how um, much time and energy is going into making sure these nights and these games are something that people can come to and people can show up as their whole self and players that are out or maybe players that aren't out, people that aren't, wherever somebody is in their own personal journey, that they are completely welcome at these, at all of our games, but I think especially on Pride Night. So I think 
yeah, the markets have evened out, but I just think there's more time and energy and attention going into having these nights be as they should be very special. So I've just seen, yeah, and there's definitely been a growth, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great community and a great celebration that's been created to make people feel included and, and welcome at these games. Um, Poe, this month, uh, you and Kristen have partnered together. You've created a GoFundMe page with all the proceeds going to the Trevor Project. Um, incredible to hear. But to start, just for those that don't know, Poe, what is the Trevor Project? Um, so the Trevor Project is the largest organization that basically puts all of their efforts and resources towards um, protecting the mental health of queer youth. So anybody who's having issues um, coming out or questioning or um, struggling with their sexual orientation or gender identity, if they don't feel safe in their selves or in their families or in some of their relationships, um, the Trevor Project offers 24 seven, 365 days a year, like crisis intervention um, hotline that you can call. They offer Trevor Space, which is an online space where people can go and communicate with people who are like them. Um, and I think it's just huge, like kind of has we like talk about um, like visibility and acceptance. And like, that's big because um, the statistics still show that people who aren't accepted in their gender identity and um, their sexual orientation are far more likely to take their own lives than, than their peers. And I think as we talk about the progress, we talk about the progress through the league and through society, there are still people who feel unsafe in their own homes. And so the Trevor Project reaches a hand out to those people and says, we're here for you. Um, and they do it all the time. And so I think that was a big thing for us because we're both all big. Um, Kristen's like been big on mental health. I've you know been there to support it. And so I think both of those things are really important to us. And this was a great opportunity to support both of those things. Um, and so, yeah, we're really, really excited about it. We actually hit our goal already. Um, and so, but we're pumped because we just want to keep it going. I think it's such a good thing. Um, to offer that kind of money and the resources for that because it is so important. Like we're lucky enough to have people in our lives who have been accepting of us and we haven't really been faced with that. Um, but there are, the reality is there are people who, who aren't in that space. Yeah, and yeah. So I, I, congratulations on hitting your goal. That is fantastic. We're going to drop the link in this podcast bio, in our YouTube bio. So anyone listening can go uh, click on that link and donate. Kristen, for you, um, who kind of started this idea? How did this come to fruition and, and why is this important for you? Um, I think for me, it's, it's extremely important because for me and coming to terms with who I am, I definitely really leaned on therapy because I think my struggle with my sexuality really manifested in mental health um, struggles. So that's just where I became really like passionate about mental health and making sure other people who are struggling with this same journey, different journey with within the community, just have resources that support them because I just know from firsthand experience, my own journey was, was really hard and I definitely needed support. So I just think it's really crucial and important that that support is available um, yeah. for anybody that needs it. So it's incredibly important to have that support. And, and it's so great to see you two starting this GoFundMe page, all the proceeds going to the Trevor Project. That is huge um, it, for fans, uh, friends, family, uh, people in the NWSL, um, anyone listening to this, how can they be better allies to the LGBTQ plus community? Good question. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I have all the right answers. I guess I would just um, try and I think talk about what I've appreciated. And I think there are definitely different views on this topic. Um, but I think what's helped me the most is just people putting first um, my happiness and like my love. And so it's like, it doesn't matter who it is. You know, it doesn't matter what they look like. If you're happy, we're happy. And I think that has really helped me just kind of accept um, myself more um, in, in terms of like, I have urged my family members to like ask the questions because I want to talk about it instead of um, 
go through like a kind of a weird phase of you're not really sure you don't really want to step on any toes and then it's like we don't really converse about it and now it's like this kind of ambiguous elephant in the room and so I've always said like if you have questions ask me I'll answer them to my best ability I'll be as honest as I can be and there's honestly some questions I don't know the answers to um and so I'll do my best to to guide you because I'm like this is a journey for me still like I don't have all the answers um you know I don't know if like you know Kristen's the first girl that I've, um, that I've dated. And so I'm like, I don't know what that means. Like people will try, but well, what are you? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is where I'm at right now. This is what I love right now. And this is, this is where I'm at. And it's like just meeting people, I think where they're at because in recognizing how scary it can be, um, to be in our shoes essentially, and, and be having that conversation because the reality of the situation is being in a heterosexual or a homosexual relationship is not the norm like we would talk about this with some of our teammates but like if I was dating a boy I wouldn't have to be like guys I just want to sit you down to let you know I'm straight (laughs) that doesn't happen you know like that conversation doesn't exist and so I think it's a scary point to be like I want you to know that I'm in a relationship with a girl and I'm very happy and just meeting me where I'm at has been super helpful being honest in conversations being honest if you don't understand but being open enough to have the conversation and open enough to hear my answers without judgment or you know like preconceived notions or anything like that um has been super helpful to to make me i love like, that okay oh. me. I, i'm just like listening to you and i'm just like yes like this is because really, I mean, you know what so much so much of like i think when it comes to like pride month i think yeah, there's a there's a ton of um, like celebratory uh, tones to it, but the truth is, it's it's a really good time for for perhaps a learning experience for many others out there who don't find themselves um, exposed to, you know, uh, people who are within the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and the other side of that, where there's that ally question, there's the a much younger generation right that that comes you know after maybe where we're at and while we ask about what people can do to be better allies i mean you've touched on it a little bit throughout this i mean you're part of the huge reason why the trevor project exists is is because to ensure that there is this kind of resource huge resources for younger people who are maybe struggling so for the two of you um what what advice would you have for for young people who who find themselves struggling um or who are within uh the lgbtq plus community right now i think the biggest advice like if i were to be able to give it to my younger self i would just say prioritizing like accepting yourself and loving yourself first because people's inability to accept you or see you or hear you is a reflection of them and not a reflection of who you are. So I just think that's massive is getting to a space where you accept yourself and you love yourself. And and that's, that's the biggest, I think, accomplishment you can have because um, through my own journey, getting there when, if I were to ever encounter someone who didn't accept me I think I'm in a space where I'm like you know what I I accept myself and their failure to accept me is not my problem um so just getting there but then I think also knowing that it's it's okay to struggle with it it's okay to have a hard time with it it's okay to have your own personal journey with it um it's everybody's journey is different so I think it's just to embrace it, but to really lean on people that are, that love you and that are safe and, um, to just take each day as it comes. But, um, yeah, I would just say embracing yourself first, because that was crucial for me. I love that. Um, so much. I, 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 um, we're going to start closing this out, but I want to maybe ask you about, um, since we're talking about the pride month as as a whole, is, is there anything within pride month that that either the two of you would maybe like to see evolve in, in in the future moving ahead? Cause I've noticed that like, there are moments like within, in pride month that maybe there are, uh, certain issues at the time that are like really, really celebrated quite highly. Um, I remember a little, maybe like a decade back where there was like really massive celebrations around, um, 
something like marriage equality, like kind of being in the forefront of this. And then we're um, trying to do our best as a community to make sure that things like trans rights are like really in the forefront of this. So for the two of you, um, with all the celebratory stuff going on with Pride Month, is, it, is there something within that that you would like to see continue to evolve in the future? That's a good question. Um, um, I think there is a level of this I've kind of noticed. I think sometimes when people think of Pride Month, they, they think of um, maybe just uh, gay or lesbian relationships. But I think like when you said trans rights, I think that is really important to not exclude that. Cause I think there might be some people who like, there might still be people in this, in this world that go, yeah, okay, we get that, but we don't understand changing your, your, your identity. And my thing is, it's not for you to understand sometimes. And like, and so I think, um, when people try to impose their own thoughts, beliefs on other people's happiness is where it, it really like grinds my gears. But I mean, I think trans rights is a constant conversation time. that um, that right now is really being. Um, taken, it's at the taken, forefront. But yeah, but it's it's it's, it's something that's that's kind of in danger right now, um, and and a lot of things. And so I think that is something that we need to continue to talk about because we have some trans players in our yeah. league and like we try our best to support them, but I think sometimes they get lost in the mix when it comes to pride month. And I, I don't think that should ever be the case. Um, it is all encompassing. It is all pride can be about your relationships, but it's about who you are as a person. And it's about really like being proud of who you are in yourself and whatever that means. Um, so I think that was like, for me, a really big kind of realization this year. And, and that could just be my perspective. Yeah. Um, but I think that just can't be lost because I think sometimes people see the rainbow flag and they're like, oh, th go gays. But I'm like, it's not just go gays. It is go gays, but it's not just so that. Much more. There, yeah. yeah, there right. are more to There's it than lot. just that. And so I think that for me is a big thing. And I think that community right now is really hurting and we need to continue to do our best um, to fight for them. To fight for them. them. Yeah. And I just think um, back to your question about being an ally, I just ally. I just think um, like pronouns are huge. Like getting people's pronouns, right? It's, mm -hmm. is something like in small conversations, like I think allyship is also done behind like closed doors and in, in very like intimate, corners of your life so like in conversations with your family in conversations with your friends is just making sure you're uplifting these people and respecting the community um getting pronouns correct um in in small spaces because I think that that's truly where it starts is showing your allyship in in small spaces and direct relationships to you and then that expands um beyond yeah. that but you build I, I love that. I think that's an important part to, to yeah. mention. I think people also have like a certain perception of what allyship is. And, and sometimes it's for some people, it is like being on the steps of a government building and screaming yeah. and for other and for other people. It's at home in a young person's bedroom saying that you love them and you're going to be there for them. So I think that's a, an excellent note to bring up, uh, Kristen. So thank you for that. I, we would like to, we, we like to do this at the end of every episode, maybe have a couple of fun questions uh, back and forth. So, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and ask uh, this one because the two of you were so great to be want, willing to come on here as, as a couple to do this, this interview, but listen, not everything is always rainbows and sunshine. So I got to ask, do either of you have any like pet peeves for each other? Like if you're wondering what are they? Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, I already know it's coming from me. Oh no, um, I have this is like a funny one, but I, I used to like cannot stand the way she puts the toilet paper on the roll. <laughs> That's a big Do you one. go over or under? And I always, I was uh, I did it. I went. Yeah. Oh well, I always get it backwards because under. even before she was coming, I literally went in my bathroom. I'm like, I have to make sure my toilet paper's ready. <laughs> and I always get it backwards because I'm like, is it over or is it under? It's you do under. I like over. It, yeah. The correct answer is over, Poe. Yes, thank you. The correct I'm answer well, is thanks, over. Thanks to Poe, I, <laughs> I am an over to the paper person now. So. Um, the other thing is the way you open a bag of chips. Like, you know, you know, like at the top and you like pull open yep. the top, she rips it. And so you rip down the whole side of the bag. So it's like, if you don't finish all of them, you can't, there's no saving hungry. it. I'm hungry. I, I don't have time. I'm just hungry. I love that. That's hilarious. <laughs> you just you just gotta get to the chips. You gotta get yeah, in there. I'm just trying to eat my chips. 
<laughs> okay, I have one for you guys. A few hours until game time. San Diego plays against Portland. What's your best smack talk you have for each other? <laughs> oh my, I, oh, I feel like I couldn't smack talk even my worst enemy. <laughs> um, I'm like seriously like. I don't even know. I, I can't even think of anything on the I, like, so I draw like a line. Kind I'm of. so boring. I like because Kristen is very witty and she's very competitive. So I think if I start to push too much, there will be a time where I'm like, <laughs> you're gonna hurt your feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have to. I like, would apologize play, immediately. I, yeah, but. I have to just play the line a little bit. Um, but I like will usually just say something like, "Hey, your shoes in time." you know, or like check a shoe or just something silly, just to like, just throw her off or, um, like your bun looks really bad. <laughs> I mean, that, along those lines. That's fighting words. That's yeah, hurtful. So, um, but nothing, I yeah, don't nothing have anything. Crazy. I feel so boring. Your bun, your bun looks really bad. We just got the, uh, the title for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Chris and Maddie, thank you both so much for, for joining us today. Thank you for helping us celebrate pride month here at attacking third. We always like to thank our listeners at the end of the show. So thank you so much to everyone for listening along. You can follow us on Twitter at attacking third for more. We're on Apple podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your shows. We're also available as videos. Subscribe to us on YouTube visit youtube.com slash attacking third and stay tuned for more pride month coverage for Sandra Herrera and Lisa Roman, Maddie Pogarch and Kristen Westfall. This was attacking third.